So we are back here on Living in the 21st Century with Andrew Sharp, Executive Director for the Authentic Caribbean Foundation. So Andrew, we, as we were saying before, we want to look at, because you have a very strong impact on the Caribbean diaspora, and I would like you to explain the power of the Caribbean diaspora, not only for the Caribbean region, but also here in America, and what it's all about. Excellent. Yes. Um one of the things that the, um, we have 7.7 .7 million Caribbean diaspora living in the United States. So you imagine the impact right. um, for the region and both also locally. Mm -hmm. um, we have an agreement between the US and, Carib and the Caribbean in terms of its strategy through the um, federal and state department and the, the importance, the role of the diaspora plays in terms of policy and assistance, both from a state level and the federal level. In one prime example is thanks to the diaspora push by local state representative and Congress people to be able to get the Caribbean trade bill passed so that the Caribbean has preferential trade um, with the United States. Um, one of the things too that must be developed from a Caribbean standpoint is that each island needs to develop its Caribbean diaspora policy, its own diaspora policy in terms of its national that who are living overseas. Um, there is a few islands who has a diaspora policy but there is some that um, have not put in right. place the diaspora policy. Um, the power of the diaspora works in many ways in terms of garnishing resources, not just remittance. Remittance will, will continue, and it has always been one of the major highlights. But there is more to, than remittance. Um, to be able to garnish resources from the diaspora garnish investment opportunities, um, expand on volunteer tourism, expand on health resources that um, the diaspora can come in and invest and provide some assistance right. to the Caribbean region. Um, in addition, the regional government must ensure that the diaspora receive the same sp special treatment or special rates just as what they are giving to other European and other American investors so that we can go back home and participate in building home and building the region. One of the great assets too that the Caribbean has is the CSME, which is the Caribbean Single Market Economy, right. where if I'm a CARICOM member, I can contribute to any CARICOM state. So that's, that's a big plus. Um, with regards to tourism, how can the diaspora invest in bed and breakfast? Lots of us has property home how we can create that and, um, synergy and invest in developing bed and breakfast, tour companies, and many other stuff. So these are some of the things that the regional government has to look at in terms of garnishing the, 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 the power of the diaspora and to having the diaspora as an advocate in terms of policies for the region is an also, also another great asset. So how effective is the diaspora and do it have right now the full support of the Caribbean government as a whole? Um, I ask that because you said there are seven million um, members of the Caribbean diaspora right here in the US. And 
I'm wondering how many, how many out of that seven million attention is really supporting um, the Caribbean diaspora because when I look around the Caribbean region and its leadership, and I want to enforce on the leadership, when someone who is not so high and mighty like yourself or myself um, invite an ambassador to a meeting with, uh, from, some other, from some other region and you try to bring together a group of ambassadors to discuss a project, they think they are so superior that if you don't have this big executive office and title and image in society or statue in society, you are not worth coming to. And I don't see that impact. And I've known you've tried your best many times to, to bring, and you did successfully so last year, I think when you had the first um, meeting uh, with Caribbean ambassadors and so forth in Boston, you, you did extremely well. But I'm talking about their interests when they see, and it's sad that I have to put it that way, and it's some dark shadow that hanging over the black Caribbean region is that when leadership see a next black person like themselves who are not on their level doing something that's creative and impactful to society because they didn't come up with the idea first, you don't get their support. They are like saying, well, who you think you are? What you can do this, I should be the one doing this. But yet still, they can do that. And it is this personal problem that I found within the Caribbean region, maybe for the exception of Jamaica, because I recognize the Jamaica government support their people 100%, whether it's through athletes or sending them on scholarship. I must say I admire Jamaica for doing that. But I got to give credit where credit is due, and I, I believe Jamaica is good for doing that. But I'm going to speak solely about the country I come from, Barbados. And I know this show at some point is going to be shown there. But the reality, I find that black people as a whole has a very dark side of them. And it's a gradual side. They don't like to see each other getting through. And not everyone. There are few that would love to pull the, their brother man through and see that they get places. But the majority get a jealousy, a grudgeful mind when you are trying to do something that they can't do. The first thing that comes out their mouth, well, who he <laughs> think he is? He think he's somebody? No. Right? And this is bad. This is bad because if we, as a people, is to grow and prosper, we need to support each other collectively, corporately. We are strong as the strongest link put together. And that's a philosophy that I see the Indians um, live with. They believe in camaraderie. They believe in coming together and sticking together and accomplishing their goals and making things happen. Here, even in this country, the Barbadian society can't get along. There are other Caribbean territories who live with the same mentality they don't support each other. And if we as a people is to survive this 21st century and make preservation for our future generations to prosper, we are in for a bad ride for our generations to come. And that's not what leadership is all about. Leadership doesn't look at themselves. They look about preserving their nation and the integrity of their nation for future generations to come building a foundation of prosperity for future generations to come. So that is why I ask you, how do the nations collectively, and from a leadership standpoint, view small people like yourself, who haven't built prime minister uh, mm -hmm. image or ambassadorship image, but have a very effective foundation that doing great things, and you, I, I compliment you on that, Andrew. You are doing great things in Massachusetts. 
you post a lot of insightful material on your website. I mean, there are no other Caribbean organization right now in America <laughs> that doing that, right? That doing that. So Errol, I have hope. There no, is good. hope. Mm -hmm. There is hope. Um, I always have hope, mm -hmm. and I must say things are changing. Mm -hmm. um, when we had started last year with the engagement, mm -hmm. we have seen tremendous improvement. Right. Um, I always say it takes two to tango, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes someone has to take the bull by the horn. Yeah, that's true. And um, we must say give credit to a lot of the countries now are engaging. Mm -hmm. The ambassadors are engaging with us. Mm -hmm. um, we have been able to, to, to open the minds of some of even the local governments mm -hmm. in the region to understand the importance of the diaspora mm -hmm. engagement mm -hmm. and um, to look at ways in which we can mm -hmm. improve in terms of providing support to the region right. and also for the engagement to see how we here in the diaspora mm -hmm. is doing, how we are being affected. Mm -hmm. I mean, at some of the meetings that we had, um, we have a series of the mm -hmm. Caribbean update on COVID-19 where we had over 12 ambassadors. They were able to hear from um, local diaspora organization and what's going on on the ground. And also we were able to hear from them what's going on from the region. Mm -hmm. And this engagement has been developing and growing in terms of um, we are able to speak to them and give some sort of advice and encouragement. Um, one of the pet projects that our foundation is dealing with now is the disability community. Right. And that has been on the back burner for quite some time. So to be able to mm -hmm. have these government to take, pay attention to, hey, mm -hmm. we need a disability act in your, uh, in your country is part of the international human rights yes. for any person. Um, some has implemented Disability Act. Some are now in the process of looking at it to, 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 to develop it. We open them up. Next year, we're going to look at trade. There's this trade bill that is there. Why are we not increasing our trade with the United States? How can we improve in that by the support of the diaspora, connecting them with suppliers who are purchasing product and who can expand regional goods here in the United States. So as I said, there is hope and um, we won't get it 100%. Some of the islands are understanding that now it's time that they engage with the diaspora. Um, not just looking at us again as a money bank, as you know, sending back home. Right but um, using the capital and the expertise that we have in terms of investment and um, services, training, because we have so many diaspora who are, who has business, who are in the top 500 company, Forbes 500. A um, lot of them have expertise that they could give back to the region. So, you know, um, it's, it's coming to come. Um, but also we as, and you spoke about it, we as diaspora has to have a seat at the table. We have to t be proactive. We have to wake up from our sleep, some of us, um, be more active organization, learning how to collaborate, you know, to be able to be more of a strong, force for change. So is the Caribbean Diaspora Administration has um, an active role in the development of the Caribbean right now as we speak? Yes, we do, because what is so great is that the State Department 
um, has ensured that they're engaging with the diaspora and getting feedback. And also we as local diaspora organization who are based in our state must also be at the table to discuss and, and, and provide support from a state level in terms of policies that might affect the Caribbean region right. and also affect our own, own diaspora members here. Prime example is the census. You know, it was, it was very important that we have our Caribbean American diaspora participate in the census so that we can access federal funding to provide both support here and, right. and support in the region. All right. So having said that, um, I want to take a deeper look at the Caribbean single market economy. And I think up to this point, even though we refer to it as the Caribbean single market economy, they can't have one active dollar uh, for that initiative to be trading in. Every Caribbean country still has their own dollar carrying a different value. Um, what would be your suggestion? Because I think if you can have a Caribbean single market economy, is that we have to be trading with one dollar, one power. But based on the economic development of some other Caribbean territories, it could simply mean that somebody's country is going to suffer some form of negative effect based on what that dollar value may be. Um, should, I'm, I'm going to make a, <laughs> a real recommendation. Should they do a mean average of everybody's dollar together and then come up with one figure and that's one value, and that's what um, that dollar or dollars that they would manufacture eventually would represent. I don't know. Uh, but I think if you can have a Caribbean single economy, you can't have Caribbean territories rambling with their dollar value. Um, it has to be one balanced value that meets everybody's requirement. Everybody has to be functioning effectively as one entity. And it's only then um, that the title Caribbean Single Market Economy should then be news. Otherwise, it's just a formation. And this is just from my observation. I don't know the ins and outs and the full facts of what's going on, but this is from my naked observation. How can you have a single market economy and there's so much trade, trading going on um, with different dollar values. One way or the other, um, those who have the lesser value on their dollar, there is going to be crushed by those who carry a bigger mm -hmm. value on their dollar in terms of trading and so forth, which means for people to buy their goods and services, obviously, it could become very expensive. Mm. Um, so I don't know what or how they're going to remedy that. I think they need to look at the European Union system, that's how it was. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they have, and it's a work in progress mm -hmm. um, with the regional government. Um, one of the things I will say again, CARICOM needs to, to ensure that the diaspora has a seat at the table. Mm -hmm. um, that's missing. Um, but also look at ways to improve the CSME. I know they've, they've implemented services, mm -hmm. um, so you could move um, skills mm -hmm. back and forth within mm -hmm. um, the region. Mm -hmm. But again, the CSME is a work in progress, a lot to be looked at and, and fixed. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully they will look at how the European system was, where you had some countries like Italy and many other, who, and, and Greece, who was part of it, who had a very, you know, mm -hmm. low dollar, devalued dollar. 
and see how they can work about a one single currency for well, the re well, for the CARICOM region. <laughs> well, I'm not sure how long that will stand up because it don't appear to stand up too long with um, in, um, Britain either. But I, I don't know. I just think that in terms of trade and purposes, you should have one dollar. If not, I wouldn't use the word Caribbean single economy because it is a myth. Um, it in practical and I don't think at this point or juncture in life that any nation should try to live in any form of denial. We, we live in a very real world in real time. And the changes of the world, whether it's in trade, whether it's in um, however the global economy functions and work, it, it works expeditiously. Things can change in seconds. Um, Wall Street is a, a clear example of how things can drastically change. The points could be up today and mm -hmm. it could be downward tomorrow. And when you operate in a world that look like that, um, you have to be very circumspective in how you do things. Um, it may very well be beneficial, beneficial to every nation in the Caribbean region to, cons to consistently work with what they have and keep their dollar value. Uh, the principle of single market economy um, is a methodology. It, it don't work. I wouldn't name it that. Um, even it doesn't matter who socially or um, you try to structure the organization that we can benefit from each other. Um, the dollar value has a very impactful force in what predetermines the name for single market economy. And that should be something they should go and really look at on a serious level. Well, Errol, COVID has come and it's here with us. Mm -hmm. And it has, it has put us to the task to, <laughs> to, to make a lot of changes, right. whether we like it or not. Mm -hmm. And I think moving forward, the region mm -hmm. has to make some changes. Mm -hmm. um, and there's many changes that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. And hopefully with the support of the Caribbean diaspora, having a seat at the table, we'll be able to. Well, well that, that'd be good. I hope that COVID ends end soon because um, I think there is a specific party right now that thinking that herd immunity is the best way to get rid of this virus. And that is the best way of killing millions of people in this country. And if that administration remains in power, I don't see any time soon that this virus will be disappearing. And what happens here in the US has a direct impact on the world and the world's economy. And if there's no change, we're going to be in for a long ride of economic distraction, globally speaking, not just here. And I don't even think uh, the present administration, even given that thought, that the impact of the coronavirus here in the US has an impact on the, globe, the global economy. And should they persist I'm not saying that they interact, they, that they initiate the herd immunity, but if the government is actually neglecting its citizens by trying to water down and keep down and hold down the tone that this is a dangerous virus, and the result of that, thousands of people are dying every day, um, you can practically call it herd immunity because there's, they ain't really doing anything about it. They talk about vaccine. I heard this for the longest time. The reality that they can't have a vaccine ready till before next year. Meanwhile, as they said over and over, just wear a mask, socially distance yourself, and that can reduce. But by the word of Trump's mouth, he likes to play it down. He wants to keep playing it down. And he did it even here in his last debate. He played it down. And you can't play it down. Because tens of thousands of people are dying every day. And that may be his systematic way of implementing herd immunity. And this nation can't do with that. It's killing tens of thousands of people every day. Uh, my philosophy is, and to everybody who listens to this program, whether it's here in the U.S., or in the Caribbean region, 
is to make sure you wear a mask, socially distance yourself, and keep your family safe as possible. And there's no, there's no harm in that. It's, it's a basic thing. It's not infringing on your democratic right. It's not destroying your integrity. You're protecting yourself. You're protecting others. And that's how they have to see it. And failing to do that, it's a road of distraction. It's a, it's a road of distraction. Well, my last word to all the Caribbean folks who are listening and for diaspora folks, mm -hmm. we got to look at building back home better. Yes. Bigger and better and keep focus. Take advantage of the opportunity that the, we in the diaspora has mm -hmm. and also take advantage of what is available there in the region for mm -hmm. us and build back home better healthcare system back home right. and uh, programs for the youths mm -hmm. to, to really lower the crime yes. and uh, create economic opportunities for job creation in the region. And that's some of the things that mm -hmm. we must push for. I think that, that's a good thing. Um, I hope that the governments can support the diaspora uh, more effectively, really get involved, really get engaged. Um, I think when people from the Caribbean region come to this country, they shouldn't forget where they come from. And a lot, a lot of them do. When they come to America, oh, we're American, no, we don't worry about those back home. No, I think you have an obligation. I think the Caribbean territories will always need help. And when you become, to, when you come to America and you can have some positive impact in helping, whether it's one person or helping the government, do something of great value. Put yourself in a position that you can be a person of merit to your country. Your country solely rely on you. Just don't come here, um, get involved in crimes, get involved. In, no, you come here, make the best out of yourself. I mean, you, you, do, you do your country <laughs> proud. You do your country proud. I'm trying to do my proud. And I love my country. I will always love my country. But I hope that the Barbian society can love themselves even more, um, eradicate the old um, concepts of hate um, and grudge and jealousy. Um, we see it display every day, back here in America also. We need to get rid of that. Love ourselves, love our nation. And there's an old statement that goes, um, I pledge allegiance to my country, Barbados, um, and to honor my flag, to do credit to my nation wherever I go. I believe we've got to do credit to our nation wherever I go. Be a credit to your nation. Make your country proud. And love yourself. <laughs> love yeah. your family. <laughs> Well, thank you all for tuning in on Living in the 21st Century. And Andrew Sharp, thank you for joining me. I hope we can meet sometime in the next future again and proceed with these conversations. Yeah, man, it was a pleasure. Thank nice you. Nice talking to you. Sure. Yeah.